but it's not like I'm like, oh, that's BTS. You know what I mean? Like, I don't connect it, but I have heard the song. Like okay, you not so, knowing Lady Gaga a couple years ago. Now you know her. Somebody brought up someone who was like dating someone named Machine Gun. Machine Gun Kelly. Me. Megan Fox. Yeah. yeah. Someone said Machine Gun Kelly. And I was like. I, I, don't, I don't know who that is either. I don't know who that I mean, is. I've seen him and people and talk about him. But then they said, well, of course, you know who Megan Fox is. And the answer again was, I have no idea. There's been a <laughs> bunch of Foxes over the years. There's a bunch of, bunch of Megans. But yeah. I don't know if I know who Megan Fox is. Do, do um, you, who, I think she's famous from the Transformer movies. I've not seen anything she's been in. But I will say, I know of her because she was married to one of the stars of the original Beverly Hills 90210, or as I like to call it, BH Niner. Or how do you spell Megan? David Silver. Me I don't know. Me Megan. I'm sure if you put in Megan Fox, she's beautiful. I'll put in Megan, M E G A N, mm -hmm. not with the E A. Oh, yeah. She's a smoke show. Yeah. Well, she's gorgeous. Okay. I'm looking at her next to Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah. And it looks like it looks like I, I can I can blow him over with a light sneeze. <laughs> what what is he? What what is he known for? Number one, when you look like that dude, you no can't idea. call yourself machine gun. Sorry. Sorry, you don't get to call yourself machine gun. Don't you think machine gun would be like a beefy roided out dude? Yeah, I figured he looked got like guns or something, you know, something like that. I, I don't know who Machine Gun Kelly is. If I he's a thinking, singer, I wouldn't know his songs. I was thinking black dude. I wasn't. No, I think he's a pale white dude. I, I wasn't thinking opaque white. Yeah, <laughs> is what he is. I was thinking more like that. There's nothing machine gun about this guy. Maybe he's a rapper and he rapid fires his rhymes. I don't know. OK, guess what? I I'm done with him and her and. Yeah, I don't know why we're talking about them. We have fitness to get to. Yeah, but so yeah, we have hanger steak to talk about and we have the movie to talk about. I want to talk about motivation early in the year and do uh, it and, and uh, the, the how you say the resolutions. Yeah, I love it. I wasn't as forthcoming as one could be. Well, you said you were going to build a canoe. A kayak, but yeah, canoe kayak. kayak is you know one of the same a canoe way. yak. And uh, yes, yeah, canoe yak. Mm, I kind of have one of those. It's a half canoe, half kayak. It's like an open kayak. Is it called a canoe yak? <laughs> no, but I think uh, you know what? Why don't we do? Why don't we build that and <laughs> turn it into Shark Tank? That. Yeah. Hey, Shark Tank. Look, there's an industry that no one buys stuff from anyway. Here's the idea. Here's a more niche down version. <laughs> canoe yak. You you canoe you yak. take a canoe, but you give them a kayak paddle. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you do it. Um. Or you could go in a kayak and use a canoe paddle. Your own decisions. Yeah. You, you know, you could do it either way. Uh, let me give you an update on that. Okay. Uh, yesterday, I got together with uh, Joey Schott. And we went to, um, <clears throat> we went over to um, Chesapeake Light Crafts over in Baltimore and picked up, you know, we actually picked up the lumber that I'm going to now cut into cedar strips and I guess that's going to be, I, look, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to Joey's on, on Saturday. <clears throat> Today is Thursday. I'm going to go there on Saturday. And I guess we're going to set up the farms and he's going to probably have me cut the strips out of all the, the cedar I bought. I got to pick up my own cedar. The help of Joey showing me what a good looking piece of cedar looks like. Are you talking about like a big plank of cedar? Are you talking about some two by fours, some four by four? What are you planing these? Like what's how do you do? How what are you doing? All right. So this Give is very, some woodworking talk. The cedar is very fine piece of wood, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they're about 12 feet long, maybe 14 feet long. They're very long. The, these planks. Think uh, two by one but very straight two by ones, you know, like okay. they're milled properly. It's not like all warped up and everything. Right. No, you can't have the warped ones. So believe it or not, there's only like six of those 14, you know, they're, they're 14 feet long, maybe 12, maybe 13 feet, but around that long 
there's only six of those one by fours. And we have maybe another four white cedars, I'm going to do the bottom in a white cedar. And there's, there's four of those, and they're about eight feet long, and they're one by four. So I'm going to be cutting these into little, very thinly, th think of like, when you go and get your meat cut at the butcher, right. I'm going to be slicing them very thin, very long. So these strips are going to be very, very thin, very long. And uh, that's the beginning. It's okay. hard to believe that that little wood is going to yield the boat. And by the way, folks, I'm going to be putting this, I'm going to video all of this, Great. And put it up on my YouTube. So you'll get to see if, you, if you're interested in such a thing. I decided since you know, this is my New Year's resolution, why not put it on my YouTube channel? Maybe it'll, it'll motivate someone else to do a similar yeah. type project oh. next year. Well, there are more projects <clears throat> in the works. Okay. Because I don't just do one New Year's resolution. I do several every year. Oh, yeah, me too. And unlike a lot of people, I see them through, no matter how dumb they might be. I'm not going to get into all of them because I don't do three or four or five. I do a lot. I do a lot. Yeah. I just carry them through. I don't, you know, a lot of people go, this year I'm going to stop smoking. And look, that's commendable. Absolutely. Do it, man. You could go a year, then you could go a lifetime. Right. And that's commendable. Some people say, yeah, I'm going to stop watching porn or whatever, whatever people do. Right. And then, you know, of course, you lose the zeal of the moment. Three weeks later, you, you're spanking it like a monkey again, watching the porn. So, right. uh, you know, or, or smoking the cigarettes or whatever. But a lot of times you'll talk to people and I'll say, how did you stop smoking? It's like, you know, I just made a New Year's resolution. I carried it through. And here I am five years later, still smoke free. I've had friends tell me they were alcoholics and they took their last drink on New Year's Day. Like, you know, it crossed over into New Year. They were skunking drunk. They woke up and walked into a 12-step program. Great. So you hear all versions of that. Mm -hmm. And here I am 20 years later. I haven't had a drink since New Year's 1990. Blah, blah, you know, and the whole thing. So for me, one of the, you know, Okay, I'm going to give a little background. We were in England. Serena and I, you know, after like 10 or 12 days of debauchery over at Kristen's, where I drank way too much wine because I was able to see Kristen when I'm having way too much wine. It was like a glass a day, right? But that was my splurge for the trip. Right. Oh, what the hell? One day I had dessert too. Or pudding, as they like to call it. Pudding. At any rate, when we left Kristen's, I went, okay, the wine is done. And we were going over to visit Serena's mom, who was still, you know, she was at Kristen's for a day or two around Christmas. But now we're going to go spend, you know, special time with her mom, you know, her mom, my mom, they're all getting older. And you want to spend as much time as you can. But we were picking up a, a car at her brother's house, Ben had an extra car, like a, a little beater. And it was going to be our car. So Ben gave us a ride to his house. And Serena being Serena, she said, you know what, let's take a COVID test while we're here, even though we took the PCR test to get on the plane. When we got to Kristen's, everybody, you know, we had to be quarantined, you know, but we were amongst a lot of other people all had PCR tests. No one else in the house had COVID. Serena and I take the test. Serena has COVID. No symptoms. Yeah. Uh, she had the same. <laughs> she had the same stuff he had and kind of sore throat that I had and everyone else was getting. I kept testing and testing and testing. I even took a PCR. I did the whole thing. No COVID. But I was getting a more and more scratchy, more head cold. Serena, COVID. So now we're stuck at Ben's in this little tiny cottage and this only raining and cold outside. That's it. Right. And by the way, we never saw a dry street the entire time we were there. I'm sure we haven't really talked about, you know, we, we haven't talked about my trip there, have we? No, we haven't. Okay. Sit back, folks. So anyway, now it's New Year's Eve. And Serena and I are cooped up 
with a little fireplace in this cozy little cabin in the middle of where it's raining and cold in the middle of nowhere in England. And you both you she doesn't feel sick, but you feel sick. Yeah, as a matter of fact, she has COVID and you don't have COVID. We both went for a jog that day in the rain. She had COVID, went for a jog. Yeah. I, I went with her. You know, I had the head cold. I just wanted to get some fresh air in my lungs, you know, breathing through my nose, you know, doing the whole thing, staying in zone two. But here we are that night. Serena is trying to get as much rest as she can when she's not out getting fresh air because she wants this to go away so that she could get on a plane in about a week. Well, New Year's Eve, I'm sitting there just watching, you know, movies and enjoying myself. Serena's in bed. And all of a sudden, I heard fireworks in the village next to us. And I went, oh, it must be New Year's here. And I was tweeting to everyone and doing everything I do every night anyway and watching a movie and tweeting. And I said, you know, I have that one New Year's resolution I mentioned to Anna, but I didn't come up with any other substantial New Year's resolution. So I pulled out my trusty book. As you know, I, I, I'm the only guy that uses a day planner still. And on the first day of the year, I jot down a bunch of things. One thing I came up with was this year, I haven't used my rowing machine a whole lot. I started doing more on the mountain, you know, a lot of running. I started doing a lot with the spinner, uh, a lot with the kayak erg and everything. And I haven't really hit my rowing machine a whole bunch. So I looked in my log because it's all logged into my computer. And I noticed that I had 290 something thousand meters. Anyway, I said, well, Vinny, that's a lot. Well, not for me, because the year before that COVID year, I did 2000 meters. I mean, I'm sorry, 2 million meters in one year. And this last year, I did, you know, less than an eighth of that, you know, just over a quarter of a million meters. So I went, okay, when does the the year end for concept two? Well, it ends on the last day of April, they start their year every year starting new on May 1st. So right there, I said, Okay, from the time I get back home on the fifth, if in fact, we get home on the fifth, I will start getting on my concept too. By the first of May, I want that 290,000 meters to be over 1 million meters for the calendar year for those folks. Right. Furthermore, by the time I get to December 31st, I'm not going to stop when I get there, right? Because I know I'm going to get there. I know I'm going to hit that goal. I need to between May and December 31st hit another million. Right? Okay, so I need to get 700,000 meters between now and May, and then another million meters before the end of the year. That's substantial time on the trainer. Another thing I'm going to do is, as every year, I must do at least 365 hours of aerobics. Now, folks, it's a bullshit resolution because I do a lot of aerobics. I was going to say, that sounds like an easy one for you. Right. It, you're thinking, yeah, it's an hour a day. Really? And you do, take days off? Yeah, sometimes I don't do anything for two or three days, but then I'll go out on the weekends and do four or five hours, you know, of But whatever. would that include your rowing time as well? Rowing time counts okay. as that also. Okay, so that's going to start happening in those other resolutions I made. Great. Drink more coffee, be nicer to people, that kind of thing. <clears throat> well, in that order. I figured we were getting home on the 6th of January. And that would give me enough time if I gave myself one day starting on the seventh, I would be okay. By the time we got here, my little head cold was a big head cold. Not only that, <clears throat> folks, if you watch the news at all, Virginia had a snowstorm from hell. Yeah. I came home to a house that was just as cold inside as it was outside. Oh. There was no electricity here. 
And the girl staying with Bonzo stayed in one room with the fireplace lit in only that room. And she was able to close off that room and kind of hunker down. Oh, so there was one, one little warm room um, for her and Bonzo and the cats. Oh my God. The rest of the house, there's no hot water. There's no electricity. There's nothing. We get home sick that night. Serena basically got to the bed, <clears throat> somehow got into bed and made herself as warm as possible. I have to after driving over two hours from Dulles, mm -hmm. spent the next two or three hours cleaning up. So I cleaned up the house, I cleaned up everything I could not clean up, you know, get things straight. I'm doing all of this in the dark. I went out, I got my camping lantern, you know, the kind with white gas in it with the globes, mm -hmm. that thing puts off. So that's the first thing I got that. And then I pulled out my camping stove and I hooked up butane to that. So that when we woke up in the morning, I can boil water, we can have coffee. That's I'm the most doing, important thing. <laughs> this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to set up for the next morning. Yep. There was still some eggs in the fridge. The girl didn't have the wherewithal to take it out, but the fridge was somewhat cool and the eggs were somewhat cool. I took them out of the fridge and just put them on the counter because it's damn near freezing in the house. In the house, yeah. Right. And I did the same with some cheese and some other stuff. And um, so I wanted to have something to eat the next day. You know, I, was, I went into Vinny survival mode. Right. All the time, more and more sick. I went around the house and lit every fireplace, you know, which means I had to trudge through the snow for about an hour, bringing wood in because the, the poor girl, she used all the wood that we had under the overhang. Right. And, you know, so I had to go out and get more wood and bring it close to the house. So, and I filled up every fireplace. I, I tried to get some heat going in the house. It doesn't help for our bedroom, which is upstairs. I literally slept that night. No worse than I've ever slept on a mountain. You know, I kept a skull cap on. I, I wore my long johns. And I was going to say, it sounds like when you're hiking a mountain. It is. But when you're sick and you, your throat is just raw and, you, you know, your snotty yeah, nose. and familiar. It's not what you want, man. It's no. not what you want. Anna's been going through a cold too, folks. So we've all been dealing with this head cold. And so we wake up the next morning. And of course, I'm not getting on a rowing machine. I got to, we got to survive now, right? Right. I got to start bringing more wood up. I got to start doing stuff. I got to get stuff. I got two trees down. The biggest tree in the neighborhood happens to be in my yard. That tree and the giant tree next to it both fell. I had three more trees down in the back. I've had tree guys here, chainsaws around the clock, taking down, taking those trees out and taking other trees out that need to come out that could crash onto my house because we have another snowstorm coming. On top of that, I now have the chills, the fever. I got the whole Megillah. At some point a day later, we, we get light. We get heat, right? So we're living in that for a couple of days. Now it's like the, the 10th or the 11th. And finally, my, my cold. Look, when I went with um, Joey Shot yesterday, I didn't even talk to him driving all the way to Baltimore because my voice wasn't there yet. A long drive. Yeah. It was like, Joey, sorry, man, I can't really talk. But Joey, has, he's got the gift of gab. And luckily he did. So all I had to do was go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Sling bladed him. Yeah. <laughs> and we got through it by the afternoon. My voice started coming back a bit. I actually did a podcast with Andy on Wednesday. I said, Andy, I'm just going to introduce us. Take it from there. I'm just going to sit here. And that's what we had to do. So that's been what's been going on here. Period. Right. Well, then you'll get to your resolutions when you get to them. I have no, you know, it's funny that sickness has made us too, because uh, I'll go ahead and say it. We had the Omicron run through the house. Yeah. Uh, Lucy came home with it. We did not get it from her. And then she wound up testing negative and we were able to take off the masks for the last four or five days of her visit and actually hang out. Oh, nice. Yeah. We had a very awkward Christmas with her opening presents next to a door that was uh, open and it was about, it was a very, it was about 35 degrees <laughs> and, and we were kicking her presents over to her 
and uh, it was fine. She she was had very mild symptoms, so she was fine. She's young and she's good. Yeah, she hadn't been boosted, but the moment I knew she was exposed, we went and got boosted, and um, we were fine. And then I I guess you can say I let my guard down, but I don't really. I don't know that I would do it differently. Uh, friends of ours who we were supposed to see and we told them, hey, Lucy is coming home and, and uh, we think she's going to test positive and she did. Because um, she, oh, by the way, she was symptomatic, showed a negative PCR and three negative rapid tests. Really? So, and then she landed and I tested her before I let her get in the car and uh, it was positive. Wow. She had the PCR the day before that was negative. But you see, so, Serena had the PCRs there. It just kept being negative and then was positive. I kept taking them going, oh, mine's got to show up now. I was taking these tests constantly. Nothing. I really would be shocked that you didn't get it at all. That's the thing. I probably got but it. Maybe it didn't show up. I don't know. This one is a weird one. That's for sure. And they say it's milder. However, I have asthma and autoimmune. So I had quite a fast cytokine response and there, it was about five days where I was like, oh, this is really scary. I can see how people get really sick from this. Yeah. Um, and I was literally just boosted three weeks before. But we went out, friends of ours that we were supposed to see, texted that more, the, more, the morning of January 4th, texted and said, hey, where'd you guys go get your PCR test? We woke up with scratchy throats. And they had seen people on New Year's Eve. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, here's where we went. And then they texted back saying, we found a place that does same day PCR tests. Wow. We're going to go do that. And I was like, cool, cool. And um, then we go to dinner, the three of us, it's Lucy's last night in town. And we're sitting in, in it's called a brother's red barn. And so it's got like 20 foot ceilings. It's literally a barn that's like yeah. it closed in, but it's pretty open air and you're the seating, you know. And we see them come in about 5.30 PM and we had just ordered. And I was like, oh, well, obviously they're negative. And they came over like, we're negative. We're like, oh my God, you're negative. Yeah. And jo join us for dinner. So we sit down for dinner. 45 minutes, leave. The next day the phone rings. It's the God. wife going, it's actually positive. And I was like, you said you were negative. She goes, oh no, that was the rapid test. We hadn't gotten the PCR back yet. So there's a little part of me that was a little bit like, well, you should have stayed home <laughs> and waited for the PCR test. Yeah. Because that is the more definitive one. Yeah. However, <clears throat> you know, it's it's OK. It happened. It's going to happen. We're all going to get this thing right. It, we're, we're all going to get this one and the next one, and the next one after we it's got just going to keep going. And so you can't like sit there and be angry or blame or whatever. And of course, she didn't mean it. And she felt horrible. And but I was Serena, like, it's OK, uh, Serena, Anna, other Serena. Here's the deal. I've called you every name in a book now. I know you have. Anna. <laughs> Good, um, we're about to do Nancy soon. Yeah. So, Nancy, um, <laughs> what people have to realize is when this thing first broke out, the only reason we got so crazy was because we were trying not to overwhelm hospitals. Hospitals, right. are, th this That's is why we stayed I mean, in. Everybody I know that has this version of it. My, my head cold is way worse than whatever Serena had. Way worse. Well, see, you know? I had a terrible version, but Lauren has it now, and he's, he's like got a bad cold, and he's fine. Yeah. He's definitely like run down. He sounds bad, but he's... I, I was like, this, this is insane. But I also have a great doctor who called in a Z-Pack and steroids for me because I don't stop talking for my job. Right, right. So I have to be able to speak. And, um, and also that's kind of my attitude is they'll never take me alive. Like I, they will never re replace me because I get sick. They'll replace me because they'll change their mind, but not because of me getting sick. So right. it was important to me to show up for NBC and clients and interviews that I had set up and podcasts. No, so no, it, it that was on me. I get that. But but it was interesting how I, I, I thought to myself, it, it is. I, I do feel asthmatic a bit. I'm trying not to I'm not I don't want to take a steroid today because they they make you stay up late and yeah, make my ears ring and I don't dexamethasone. It was fine. I had two days of steroids and now I'm off. I want to just heal naturally now. And I'm taking oh, my God, your liposomal vitamin C, your yeah. zinc picolinate, your vitamin D, 10,000 I use for until this thing dies down. And then I'll go back to my three a day. And um, I am so glad that I have access to your vitamins. And I'm so glad that I had access to Dr. Kipper who could call in stuff for me. Yeah. And I felt like very, very lucky to be able to do that. 
not everybody has that kind of access to stuff. You know what I mean? And so I went into CVS to pick up Lauren's Z pack yesterday. And I did notice a little bit of the brain because they were like, when's his birthday? And I was like, six, 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 seventy one. Like I couldn't remember when his birthday was crazy, right? It was weird. It, I didn't have like COVID brain. Like I got that. And there was one another point where I was trying to like pay some bills and I was on the online website or whatever. And I couldn't process what I was doing that. And I had to like talk about away. that. She, she talked about a day or so of, of that. That was weird. I have never had a cognitive thing in my life other than forgetting a noun here and there. And so that felt like, oh, shit, that's scary. Like to forget, like to not be able to process information. So but that's fine. It's passed. But I you know, again, if they say it's a milder case, I'm glad I got boosted because I wouldn't have wanted it to be worse than that. Yeah, and that's we, we were all boosted because of the trip and everything. So we, yeah. uh, long story short, what happened to me with my resolutions was, I think that's when most people would just go, oh, screw it. It's out the door for this year. No, no. Folks, this is where you, the, you know, it, it could be diet. It could be anything you want to do. This is why you turn it into a game, right? Yes. And, and as much as I hated the nuns, and you've heard me talk about the nuns, the one thing those bitches instilled in me, <laughs> and, and I, I still use it today, was they didn't care that I was, you know, a good student and a great athlete and all this kind of stuff. And we had to travel a lot for games, basketball games, baseball games, football games. We're always traveling. You know, when you live out in the country, you're on a bus, man, yep. sometimes you're coming home two, three o'clock in the morning on these cold ass buses. You know, it was like school buses that we would travel on and, and you're trying to sleep on your hands and everything else. And the nuns were like, we don't care if you want to be an athlete. If you want to be extraordinary, you have to be extraordinary. You have to figure out how to do your work for school and do that. That's right. You don't, you don't get to have one or the other. And, and I, I've always used that in life. I've always turned it into a game. How am I going to get this homework done? How am I going to study for this test and do really well in this game tonight? Right. Or have practice until six o'clock every night and do all this stuff. So if you want to be extraordinary, you have to do extraordinary things. And this is the same thing. I didn't just drop my goals. I went back and looked at my goals. And I want to say it was on Sunday, even though I still couldn't talk and my throat was killing me and everything else. I came in, I got on my spinner, for like 30 minutes. My heart rate never went over 110. Kept my mouth closed. I breathed through my nose. But I was a hassle. Um, but I was able to do it. I got off of it. I got on my concept two for 15 minutes, total of 45 minutes. That was it. And then the next day, I started on my concept two. I stayed on for 30 minutes. And I got on my bike for 30 minutes. And then the next day came around, I got on my bike for 45 minutes, and then got on the concept two for 30. What I'm saying is, I'm already watching when I go to my logbook. I look today, I'm well over 300,000 now. It's yeah, not adding up anymore, right? Those little short rowing sessions are adding up. My aerobics are adding up. Hell, I, here, let me look. Hang on. Hang on, Anna. And let me say this if you do get a cold or you get the congestion, you know, the best way to clear it out is to go do some cardio, go for a walk, get right. on your spinner because it clears out your uh, the inflammation in your sinuses. It's the only thing that gets it going. I'm telling you here, that, that every time I had a session, I would go out for 20 minute walk and come back Yeah. because because you have to be able if you're if you're talking like this, like breathing, you can't, it's the air that has to flow through in you order need to, be able to, to get speak. the good oxygen. It can't look mm -hmm. what I've been doing for my workouts is I light a really roaring, big roaring fire in my fireplace down in my in my gym. And then I cracked the window so I could get that fresh oxygen in and still have some warm air. And it's kind of like, you know, Stallone and Rocky four, when he goes off with the Russians, it will snow outside and you got the fire going and I got the windows open, cracked. You make it sound and, very romantic. And listen, I, I've been getting, and look, 
we're doing this on the 13th day of the year. Yep. In two days, it's called Quitter's Day. The 15th is called Quitter's Day. I wrote about that in my Substack this week because I was like, don't, don't, if anything, just to stick it to them because they're trying to call it something, don't quit. Is that the 15th? That's Saturday? Yeah. Okay. All right. So right now on the 13th, I have exactly six hours and 10 minutes of aerobics. So I'm way behind the eight ball. That's all right. You'll catch up. Guess what? I'm not worried about it. Are you just adding it up in your book as you go along and carrying that number? Look, I'll show show it to the audience right here. Let me me grab my book. I've been using the same book. You've seen this book has been, it's come to your house. Oh yeah. Um, uh, Here, I'll I'll show the world. Just get the new year and put the new year in there. Uh, Let me turn. I'm going to turn to a page. Mm, There's people's names written on these pages. People are called. All right. So, um, you know, it's the same book. It's a homemade yep. book that I made years ago. This is the book I used to write all of my clients um, notes in. And uh, I got a friend of mine to do all this incredible tooling on it front and back. Yeah, super cool. And I, I, I keep a day minder. I, I took the first couple of days of, of last year and I just fill it in. But if you if I go a few more days, you would see all the writing. Right. And what I do is right up here at the top each day, I write down what my exercise was, what I've done. And it takes up a little space right up here on each day. Mm -hmm. Sunday, Mm -hmm. I usually just write at the end of Saturday. And of course, this Saturday on Quitter's Day is the first day I'll be over at Joy Shot's shop. Uh, By the way, if you guys want someone to build an incredible kayak. Uh, he is not paying me to say this, but Turning Point Boats. Go check him out on Instagram and everything. We'll give Joey a little plug at Turning Point Boats. Can I this show guy you? does some of the most incredible work on the planet. As a matter of fact, if you know anything about this stuff, uh, Nick Shotty, who makes all of the Guillemot kayaks and all that, Nick Shotty's boat is in uh, the Museum of Modern Art and everything else. When Nick needs repair work done, he goes to uh, Joy Shot. What, what do you have there, Anna? I did it again. You spilled again. I poured meat on my computer. Oh, yeah. I'll pour meat on your computer. What is that, Anna? What am I looking at? Hanger steak. Oh, yeah. That looks good. Seared with shallots. <clears throat> it's called wow. Anglais à Chalot. I learned how to make this in France in 94. It looks very good. It's going to be, I think, one of my first paid Substack recipes. Really? Tell me, tell me a little more about that. How can people find you on Substack? Oh, it's and just anabacino.substack.com. I'm putting exclusive recipes there that I'm not going to put anywhere else. It's worth spilling meat juice on your computer, which I'm cleaning off right now. Yeah. Guys, go um, buy this recipe so that Anna can pay for the computer that she just ruined. Please. I can't wait to like, reheat this for dinner. I had to take pictures of it. And I'm probably going to take a video of making it because it's so easy. It's like one of those things that you're like, that would cost 40 to $50 in a restaurant. Yeah. But you can just make it at home. For how much? I don't know. I think that I feel like that it was a pound of hanger steak, which I feel like was 13 or $14. Not bad. A couple of shallots, some, some Dijon, some balsamic. So some parsley. For- for eight, 18 bucks or less, you're making that yeah. whole dish. And that's two people. What, you got two people there. Yeah. Come on. That's, Maybe, and I'm, I think I'm going to make either a salad or a little side of green beans to go with it. That's it. Done. That's perfect. That's perfect. Oh, so good. It smells so good. In here. It looks delicious. It's really good. Anna, do I have to pay at substack.annavacino.com or can I, can you help a brother out here? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Take a bite of that, Anna. Let me see how it looks. Look at that. Oh yeah, that is so. Is is, is it tender? Steak, it's so oh. tender. Hanger steak is called. It used to be called butcher cut. Yeah, I wonder why they call the butcher it would cut it out. It's like a little skinny part near the ribeye. Yeah, the butcher would cut it out and keep it for himself because it was why so they, small. Why do they call it hanger steak now? I don't know because they hang it up. Hmm. That's what they do. Why did? It's called Anglais, O N G L E T in French. Huh. Anglais. I need some of that. So, Anna, um, 
did I cover motivation? Look, folks, I'm behind the eight ball. I'm not stopping. I'm not quitting. As a matter of fact, I'm starting one of my resolutions on the 15th. Matter of fact, I was supposed to start that, re that you know, the, the boat the week I got back. But there was no getting to Joey's shop and everything else. And uh, I'm going to try to get there and do my first day before the big snowstorm comes in on Sunday. I got to tell you, Vinny. Yeah. Being sick and feeling like most colds. I mean, you've been going through a really long cold. Yeah. So there's a period of time where you're like, am I just not going to get better? I know that like you overall know you're going to get better, but sometimes when you're sick so many days in a row, you kind of get down about it a little bit. And I, yesterday was day six for me. And it was the first day I woke up going, oh, okay, I'm taking a turn for the better. This is good. Because it took all of my energy just to be able to focus and get through the day. And I realized, first of all, even going on little walks all day long really helped with everything as far as you can do it, you know, like moving the body. And last night, last night, I wanted to lift weights. I just wanted to lift weights. It just felt good to do it, to use my body. Yeah. And, yeah. and also too, staying really strict NSNG, I think has really helped too for yeah. me. And, um, and obviously don't, if you get sick, don't have any alcohol or anything. Just heal, just let your body heal. But yeah. I find that when you get out of sickness, you naturally are so excited to be well. You want to move your body. You want to do the, you want to go back to your resolutions. Like I would hope, I don't know. It's only, it's only, it's only middle of January. You guys don't, don't quit. Please don't quit. Let's make it easy on yourself. What do you need? Show up to the clubhouses, show up to the uh, groups, ask questions, ask for support. I know a lot of y'all come to this work by yourselves and you don't have your family supporting you. And then eventually you'll do it and have so much success that people will start asking you questions. I mean, like, what are you doing? I want to do what you're doing. And then you'll tell them and then they'll tell you you're crazy. And then they'll ask you again and then they'll actually start to do it. So just know that like, you're not alone and please don't quit. And, and if you did, if you were like, screw it, I had the French fries tomorrow, stop, just stop. Oh, look, I was just having a conversation with a guy named Mark. Oh, nope, he's, he's you gotta you need me to vamp. No, Mark, no. Mark, Bobark, but then Fofark, be my Bobark. Mark. Don't sing, you're gonna ruin your voice now. Oh yeah, the way I sing. <laughs> um, no, I was just talking to Mark and his wife. He was my last phone caller. That's why I wanted to talk about, you know, the whole motivation thing. And Mark is a mail carrier and uh, lives in upstate New York or somewhere up there. And, uh, you know, he he lost like 80 pounds doing an S and G. And then a few things happened, you know, you know, COVID year happened. Now we're two years into COVID year and he's put some weight back on and he's got these goals, right? And he's talking to me on the 13th of the, uh, of the first month of the year. And he's asking me, hey, you know, he gave me a bunch of his goals. So do you think I could do it by the end of the year? And I told him realistically, I think you could do this, you could do that, you could, and he's going for it. And it made me realize, you know, talking to him, because everything I, I get, I get from talking to people every day. Yeah, that, that's, that's my, that's what I love to do. You guys give us endless, endless content to be able <laughs> yeah. to address. It never, it ne literally never stops. The note that I have of questions is like, scroll, 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 yeah. scroll. I have so much stuff. In fact, do you want me to ask you a question from Twitter that came in? I would love for you to ask me a Twitter question. Can I ask you real quick first? Congratulations on Beyond Impossible. How is it doing? Uh, it was number two yesterday on iTunes. I don't know where it is on Amazon. They haven't given me a report yesterday, but it, it is kicking butt. Everyone seems Great. to be happy with it, uh, with, with the progress of it. So I need you guys to be reviewing. Reviews are the lifeblood. Yeah, yeah look, it, don't go, yeah, I'm going to review later. It, just go do it right now. Go give it a, a, if you've watched it. I like that Amazon is doing a thing now where you can't leave a review until you've watched the whole movie. I love that. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because that's now awesome. you, can't, you can't get the fake vegan reviews going, this is crap. You know, right. they at least have to buy it and watch it. Well, the vegans probably off. don't want my sub stack with the hanger steak, do they? No, no. Let, let me tell you something. They, they don't want any part of anything I'm doing. But did, <laughs> did I write something to you on Twitter and said, hey, let's talk about this one? Yes, I have that one. Do you want it? Yeah, let's do that one. Okay. Robert asks, 
And congratulations, Vin. I think that's friggin' awesome. An amazing accomplishment. The movie is fantastic. Everybody get Beyond Impossible if you haven't. And 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 every time you tweet or Facebook a nice note to Vinny about it, you can use that as review. You can put that in your review. Just yeah. saying. Yeah. I always say that to people with the books too. I'm like, I love hearing the feedback. Trust me. If you could literally copy and paste that into a review on Amazon, it will help other people find the material. Yeah. That's how anyone finds what we're yeah. doing because we get shot. Especially new reviews yeah. that trigger the, the come it to come up. So thank you guys. Um, Robert asks loaded or impossible question. Love the start. When as a younger man, would you say we obtain our ideal weight? Senior year in high school with water polo and swim, I was 185. I'm 230 now, but diet and exercise are very much part of my life. Makes sense? Okay. Robert, Robert's basically asking, did he peak already? Yeah, I'd say no. No, here's the, I don't think he's asking that. I think what he's asking is, where are we? And look, if you look at kids back when we were in high school, everybody was lean and mean, you know, and that was that. Now, when I graduated senior year, I weighed uh, going uh, going to Tulane the following year. I weighed about somewhere between two oh eight and two twelve on a six foot frame, and you would say, "Well, Jesus Christ, man, that sounds like you were pretty heavy." I was ripped. Uh, you know, I had a I had a twelve pack. Uh, I was ripped out. I had big giant quads. I looked like a bodybuilder. That's the way my body builds. I, I looked like a bodybuilder. But if you had put that on a BMI scale, you would have gone, they would have said this guy's morbidly obese, even though I didn't have anything jiggling on my body, right? So you can't take that and look at me. And by the way, after my freshman year in college, with all the red meat and everything they were serving us, and I spent all my time in a gym when I wasn't studying, I had worked my way up to like 220, 222, 225 going into my sophomore year. And again, I didn't put one iota onto my waist, right? I was looking more and more like a bodybuilder, even though I was a football player. So you can't look at sheer numbers and go, well, this is the right weight, you know, because I, according to the BMI scale, I've always been morbidly obese. I've, a lot of time in my life, I've been morbidly obese. Yet, I've never had a gut. Well, except for that six-month period after football when I, didn't, I couldn't eat on training table anymore. I wasn't eating meat and eggs as often. I was still having eggs in the morning. But I learned about a food that people eat when someone's not paying for their meal called ramen noodles. Uh, I also ate regular pasta a lot, and I started eating rice with cans of tuna fish put in it. Because that, that's what I could afford. And boy, did I start gaining weight pretty quickly. And that's when I came up with my, I better stay away from sugar. I better start staying away from some of these grains. Boy, it was tough. It really was. And that's when I found the bicycle. <clears throat> that's when I started going to Donaldsonville more on the weekend so I can get meals that, you know, included. That had protein and fat in them. And not just ramen carbs. Yeah, no. Uh, uh, ramen's like just liquid paper sugar, like. Yeah, it was wheat it was, and rice flour and, and glue sodium. sugar. It was it, you felt and a carbs. lot of sodium. Yeah, it's just ton of sodium, but it filled your gut up. You and, could get um, seven ramens for a dollar when I was in college. That was pretty good. Yeah, that, that sounded about right for us too. You you would get like a 10 pack for like a buck or something. And, you know, I would go home on the weekends, especially during hunting season and try to get onto a deer hunt because if, even if you don't shoot a deer, if let's say two deer were shot on that hunt, then, you know, you would get a piece of it. I would have some red meat to bring back with me. Um, get some deer sausage, whatever I could get to bring back. That was protein, man. I, I just started getting into eating that way again, because I put that gut on pretty quickly and got it off pretty quickly. So, you know, to answer the question, if you're, you gotta, you know, in some cases you gotta look in a mirror, you gotta look in the mirror and go, what's doing, what's doing here. That might right. be a better scale than the scale. Um, 
you, you know, you look at someone like, um, I bring his name up a lot, Scott King. You yeah. Know, the, the guy is, you know, he's talking about it. He's got COVID right now. And uh, he's so saying, definitely. if I had gotten COVID when I was 580 pounds, I would be dead. Right. So you have to look at where you are and what you're doing in life to, to determine that. Um, right. When you get out of the shower next time, take a peek in a mirror. See if you're happy with what you're looking at. If not, um, you might want to curtail your workout a bit. You might want to watch at what you're eating. But if you're eating a lot of protein and you're working out really hard, it's not unusual to be that height and to be that weight. But you know, look at your gut. See what, see what the situation is. Um, I have an update for the meat juice spill on my computer. My keyboard is inoperable. <laughs> That's not good. No, it's not good, Vinny. Um, and I had, a so I hope that this, day, if, if we get disconnected, I'm done because this computer has been destroyed by meat juices, Well, let me ask you, which would be so on brand for me, by the way, is that a laptop or is it like just a keyboard? It's a laptop. Oh boy. So, yeah. Okay. So, that's so I'm just saying if we get disconnected, it's the meat juices, but, um, so Anna, don't touch anything right now. I was because I usually what I do is when I, somebody's questions asked, I highlight it. So the mouse is working, but but the keyboard is not. So I couldn't hear delete because I, I don't want to obviously repeat questions. I have so many more things to bring up, but they're kind of bigger things. So do you want to call it? Yeah, you know, we, we can call it a bit early tonight uh, as long as we do a Villa Capelli ad since they paid for a spot here. Yeah, they did. Yeah, it's the best olive oil on the planet. You yeah. know what? I just put a YouTube video up where I made um, lamb chops, guys. And to make lamb chops, you make a little like paste with Villa Capali olive oil and a bunch of fresh herbs and dried herbs and garlic. And then you rub it all over the lamb chops and then you roast it in the oven. It's really very easy. And when I first bought Villa Capali olive oil, it was I, I thought I was like, oh, this is so nice. I don't want to cook anything with it. And now I won't use anything else. I have no other. For a while, I was like, well, I'll just use Costco for like when I cook, but I'll save Villa Capelli for the salad dressings. Nope. Only Villa Capelli. It's the best olive oil on the planet. You guys need to get yourself some, especially if you're really hardcore NSNG right now. If you're doing it, do it. Get the three liter tin plus add on some of the salts. Get your price high enough so that when you use the discount code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, and you get 10% off your order, you still qualify for the free shipping. And um, so then you get 10% off, you get your free shipping, you get your oil, you get your spices, you get your salts, you get your whatever you've ordered, and uh, then you'll be very happy. But I, I really do strongly recommend, everyone starts with a smaller bottle, and then they're like, oh, I just have to turn right around and reorder. Just start with a three liter tin. That's the full Vill move. Yeah. Villa Capelli olive oil, best olive oil on the planet support them. They are sponsors of this show for almost 10 years now. We love them. Yeah. Yeah. Go check it all out. Folks, check out everything Anna Pacino is doing. Uh, oh, let me say this real quick. We oh. have to raise the sauce prices in a couple of days. So after this comes out, you have a couple of days, maybe a day, get sauce at 2021 prices because we have to raise them. Yeah. I'm, I'm like stretching it out as long as possible. <clears throat> uh, so go get some Eat Happy Kitchen sauces. And uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, go look. Everything she's got over at Eat Happy Kitchen is delectable. Just go there and get it. Get yourself a straw. Just put that straw in the bottle and just drink it. It's it's that good. It is. Uh, and also the books, Eat Happy Cookbooks, one and two, Eat Happy Two. Go check it all out. Anna Vicino, tell them about the Substack again, because I can't remember how to say it. AnnaVicino.substack.com. All it is, is an email newsletter. So it just goes to you once a week. I put it out on Thursdays. It's just for the super fans. And you guys get exclusive recipes. I'm going to be putting interviews on there. Um, people in the food space, doctors, things like that. Just like fun little things. Product reviews, me doing videos, special stuff that will only appear there. So go support. Please subscribe. Anavicino.substack.com. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, you know what to do with me. We have a movie out. We really appreciate it if you guys watch it, review it. The movie is called Beyond Impossible. It's kicking butt. It's we so it well done. Butt. It's so well done. Yeah. Look, if this movie doesn't make money, then I'm out of the movie business. That's just, you know, that's not a threat. That's just a reality. Um, 
So if you guys want to see my next thing that comes out, we got to get this one sold. So appreciate it when you guys go do that. Before you go to Amazon, go to VinnyTartarus.com, click through the banner. It puts coal on the fire and gets my train down the track. And I'm able to keep this show free for a gazillion years in a row. We also have the super fan page at VinnyTartarus.com. I've noticed more and more people giving to that. Thank you. Look, folks, don't make this someone else's issue. You help out too. We need, we need all the help we can get to keep this show free and up and running. 